And we're back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind with Terra. Now, in the last episode, we made our way into that ancestral tomb that had quite a bit of stuff in it. More than I was expecting, because mods. And, after fighting our way through literally everything, we met some ghosts who were actually willing to talk, and apparently this necromancer lady, Caius' contact and our co-worker in the Mages Guild, actually managed Well, basically, she was involved in some necromancy ritual thing or something. I mean, I did find it kind of suspicious how she kept denying being a necromancer, and even though she's not, she's apparently a member of some necromancer cult that was doing some secret ritual with necromancers in that ancestral tomb. So, we cut a deal with these ghosts, where... We will go and find one of their descendants in the Balmora Tribunal Temple. That descendant can tell us the stuff we need to know about the Sixth House and or Nerevarin. And we don't have to steal a skull from that tomb. And I think we've decided, at this point, we will not be returning to any ancestral tombs anytime soon, because that was just a fucking nightmare. Anyways, I, I made my way back to Belmore off-camera, just because it was going to be kind of a tedious journey that didn't add anything. Although, you did miss one thing as a result of that. We got approached by a NPC who called themselves a sleeper and said, as it says here in my journal, You cannot deny your lord, Dagoth Ur. The sixth house is risen, and Dagoth is its glory. Now, that makes no sense to us, so we're just assuming he is completely nuts. But now... It is very late, as you can see there, 11 at night, so before we go and deal with this thing with the temple, we're going to rest for a good 9 hours. I'll wake up at 8 in the morning, and everything will be open, and we can deal with that then. And we have a disturbing dream, it would appear. You can only recall one part. Tall figure with a golden mask led you among the dead, as uh, though a, as through a wedding celebration. You heard many voices, but no lips moved. You strained to breathe, but your chest didn't move. The tall figure spoke with each figure as he passed among them, laughing and joking as if they were alive. They made no reply. You tried to cry out, but without breath, your tongue fluttered in vain. Yeah, that's not disturbing in the slightest. Not at all. Now, we have a couple of little things that we want to do. First of all, I picked up an enchanted sword that we are absolutely not going to be able to use because it's a two-hander and one-handed long blades are our speciality. 
so we picked that up in this ancestral tomb. Thankfully, the ghosts didn't ask for us to give back our loot, so we still have it. We'll trade that off to Revere. Along with my bow. I am not going to be using a bow. We have a magic one, so I'll just use that if I need to. The fire enchanted blade is also just straight up better. So I'll keep Firebrand, and these others can go. Hmm. Command creature honestly doesn't sound that useful to me. For some reason I have five skulls. I do not need five skulls. In fact, I need zero skulls. Let's see if I can get 90 gold out of him. Eighty-six, no. 85. Again, no. And this guy's a tough customer when it comes to bargaining. Hmm. Let's see. He sells all these weapons with bound weapons attached to them for summoning purposes. Very useful. But it's 9,000 gold minimum for one of them. You have questions. Which is not great. Hmm. Although, before I head off and go speak to Temple Man. I have a sword that I just sort of left lying around here in the mage skill. And I'm gonna pick it up because I left it there because my inventory was absolutely clogged with stuff and I didn't have the space to carry it. I'll take those. Even if the scrolls aren't too useful, I can sell them and the mage's guild wants to provide me with free gold in the form of stuff to sell, they are more than welcome to do so. Why do you hey Revere, not? we're back. And I have more stuff to sell. I have my steel katana. To cure common diseases. I'll not be using. Now I have about 400 gold. Could probably afford to go buy a few new spells. But let me check my spell list here just so I know what we haven't picked up yet. We have Mark, but we don't have Recall. And those two spells are the ones that would have saved my bacon before with needing to get back here in a hurry. Mark and Call. Temple's this way. We 
would like to pick up the recall spell. Although, if they don't have it, I'll check around the mage guild some more, I think. And then just set my mark in Caius' house. But if I check, I should probably confirm who the guy I want to talk to about this is. Let's see. Dralaval Andrano is who we want here. I should have a word with him about this necromancer business. Oh, something? it's you, eh? I am Dralaval Andrano, apothecary and initiate of the Tribunal Temple. Well, I'm here because the ghosts of some of your ancestors have gone apeshit and they asked me to get you and tell you about this hot mess concerning some necromancers. I'll not be speaking to an outlander on such matters. I've actually just come from there. Dare openly speak of such heresy? Oh boy, he's pissed. But we started now, we can't exactly stop here. Inside the tomb, I spoke with one of your ancestors, Levule Andrano. Here it asked that I informed you of what had taken place within and claimed that you would share information I seek in return. Our ancestors would never think with an outsider, though how you know that name raises questions. And then Outlander, what could have fouled the Andrano ancestral tomb so thoroughly that our forebears would willingly speak with invaders? One of your own, Garena, has betrayed you. Together with Anirne and Sean Gramuzgob, he has been practicing necromancy on your ancestors. The intruders you sensed were sent to clean up their mess. Gorena, my poor foolish niece, ever since she joined the Imperial Guild, she has grown increasingly distant. I had thought her recent expulsion would turn things around, but I, no I know now what you say is true. Her fondness for that Altmer was to be her undoing. So be it. Our ancestors have spoken, and all Dunmer know what punishment this type of necromancy entails. Tell me, what information was it that my forebear bid I share with you? Oh, it was the Nerefering cult, not the Sixth House. Your ancestor assured me that you would share any information you have on the Nerefering cult. The Nerefering cult? That isn't exactly the kind of knowledge the Temple is keen on sharing. The Andrano family has given you its word, though, and I will not break it. Give me a moment to find my notes on the subject. Okay. That was... That went better than I thought. I was half convinced he was going to murder me on the spot for daring to mention that I'd been in his ancestor's tomb. Thankfully not. Come on, look at me. Okay. Now, about the Nerevering cult? You have found your notes by now, yes? This is not a topic that should be discussed in public. Especially not here of all places. These are all my notes on the cult. Take and look over them in private. I honor my ancestors' wishes, but do not expect me to speak any more on this subject. Okay, well, if he says it's not something to be talked about in public, then I'm going to take his word for it. This guy is a native. He would know that better than we would. And I think. Now, let's go see how pissed Caius is going to be at us for altering the terms of what we agreed to do to get this information. What, Outlander? Why do you 
stab me. And if possible, I need to find a recall spell. As setting a mark is useless to me if I can't recall to it. Because I'm a little sick. Like, it's a freaking drain attribute. Get over yourself. <laughs> you do not sell recall. Infuriating. I really do need a recall spell. Fine. Based on the. Apparently, I should rest and meditate. What I've learned, because I managed to level up from that. Anyways. I should go see the mage's guild if anybody has this spell. And apparently it's 2 a.m. now. I took an eight hour rest in the middle of the day. Which, given how much of a clusterfuck that tomb was, I'm not surprised that I felt the need to do so. Let's go to the Mage's Guild. And see if anyone there can teach me how to cast Spell of Recall. Mm. And we're not high enough rank. To learn spells from that bitch, apparently. Lovely. This lady, who is stuck in place for some reason, doesn't even sell spells. Though she is the one we would go to about enchanting, if I ever decide to start making my own magic items. Because if I recall correctly, it's about 8 billion percent easier to have someone else enchant it and you just provide the item and the soul gem and a shit ton of gold than the other way around. She doesn't sell spells. You don't sell spells. Hmm. There's a few we could get, but Recall is the one on my list right now. Looks like mm, Sharn are totally not a necro. The lady appears to not be in the building. Did she get arrested or punished or something? I thought the Mage's Guild didn't have any rules against necromance. Ahead, or maybe what do you need? someone sent an assassin after her. That seems the most likely. She upset the locals with that stunt and was assassinated for it. Mm. You... Not. Hmm. 
I see you. Going to be selling Dino. anything to me. Jira. May I you. you. Uh, don't sell spells of call. Hmm. I don't think we have any potions of cure disease. We have a cure common disease, actually. I was wrong about that. That did it. Hey. Uh, and now, I will rest before we go and see Caius. Level two now. That is us. Gotten us a lot in speed, amazingly. Faster movement seems like a good one to me. Mm. And I'm gonna put a point into Intelligent, even though that'll only give us one, as we want to boost our maximum magic. Also strength. I do still have to swing my weapon at people. Yes, it took us just that long to level up. Uh, fire. Oh, frick. I accidentally kept the one-hander and sold the other one off to Revere. That was a bit of a misstep. I have to go buy back one of my weapons now. Let's just hope he hasn't sold the thing yet. Get out of my way. that I'll give you this he doesn't want it to even out that's annoying Eight gold. What do you want? Pretty fair exchange, and I have the weapon that works for me now. What is this about? Mm. This smooth skin wants something. Mm. Okay. Time to head to the other side and see Caius and potentially get lectured. Because we didn't exactly do things to the letter of his instructions. I mean, I, I suppose he might be impressed that we managed to find a way to navigate the whole necromancy thing without antagonizing the locals, but somehow I doubt it. Somehow I doubt it. Anyways. We got these notes on the Nerevering cult. 
I should probably read them. <sighs> Following our notes on the cult, as requested by Caius Cassades, the Nerevering cult. This Ashlander religious cult follows prophecies of a Nerevar reborn to honor ancient promises to the tribes, to reestablish the traditions of the prophet Veloth, to cast down the false gods of the tribunal temple, and to drive all outlanders from Morrowind. Temple and Empire outlaw the cult, but it persists among the Ashlanders despite imperial and temple repression. Because it is persecuted, it remains a secret cult, and it is hard to judge how widespread it is among the Ashlanders, or whether it has any following outside the Ashlander tribes. The Nerevarin. The Ashlanders firmly believe that Nerevar will return to restore the glories of ancient Resdane. Morrowind was called Resdane before the Imperial occupation. The Ashlanders say the Great Houses and the Temple have abandoned the pure teachings of the Prophet Veloth, forsaking ancestor worship for the false gods of the Tribunal, and embracing the comforts of civilization that corrupted the High Elves. The Temple, on the other hand, venerates Saint Nerevar, uh, rejects the notion that the false incarnate will walk the earth like a ghoul. Nerevar. The Temple honors Saint Nerevar as the greatest Dunmer general, first counselor, and companion of Vivek, Almalexia, and Sothasil, who united the Dunmer houses to destroy the evil Dwen Dwemer, the treacherous house Dagoth, and their western allies at Red Mountain. But the Ashlanders say Nerevar promised to honor the ancient spirits and the tribal law, and he will come again to honor that promise. To the Ashlanders, this means destroying the false temple and driving the imperial invaders from the land. Nerevarine prophecies. Dream, visions, and prophecies are a respected tradition in Ashlander culture. Their wise women and shamans take careful note of dreams and visions and pass on the tribe's legacies of vision and prophecy to their successors. By contrast, the temple and western faith are suspicious of mysticism, and they regard interpretation of dreams and visions as primitive superstition. The most common version of the Nerevering prophecy is the Stranger. The verses are obscure, as are most prophecies, but two observations are in order. First, many less well-informed scholars assume that the phrase journeyed far neath moon and star is just a cliché to suggest a very long journey. But the, Nerevar, but the Nerevar of legend was known to possess a magical ring named One Clan Under Moon and Star, upon which Nerevar is supposed to have sworn his promise to honor ancient Ashlander traditions and land rights. <sighs> Apparently, the old Nerevar was quite the fan of excessively lengthy names, because one clan under Moon and Star is a bit of a wordy name for your ring. It really is. Anyways, back to the notes. Second, the reference to seven curses must certainly refer to the lost prophetic verses known to the Ashlanders as the Seven Curses. Stranger. When earth is sundered and skies choked black, and sleepers serve the Seven Curses, to the hearth there comes a stranger journeyed far neath moon and star. Though Starkborn sire to, no, Stark born to sire uncertain, his aspects mark his certain fate. Wicked stalks him, righteous curse him, Prophets speak, but all deny. Many trials make manifest a stranger's fate, the curse's bane. Many touchstones try the strangers. Many fall, but one remains. Lost prophecies. 
Ashland or elders complain of prophecies which have been lost to tribal memory uh, due to the carelessness or ineptitude of earlier generations of wise women and Ashkans. Suspicious scholars wonder whether these prophecies might have been deliberately forgotten or suppressed. Three Nerevarim prophecies in particular are said to have been lost. The Lost Prophecies the seven curses and seven visions of seven trials of the incarnate perhaps these lost prophecies will be found someday either in forgotten accounts written by literate travelers or in the memories of isolated ashlanders or in the secret traditions of the wise women and shamans yeah well that's more than we knew before there's still Probably a few gaps that are worth filling in. Uh -huh. For one, a lot of it's just about the prophecies and the very basics of their beliefs. It doesn't really tell us a whole lot beyond the prophecies the fact that there are lost prophecies and some speculation about how the people that follow that cult think things should go but again it is more than we had before going on this journey so that's progress hey Caius I see I stand in good company what can I do for you here to discuss your orders, or is there something else you want? That is indeed why I'm here. These are the notes on the Nerverine cult. <laughs> Excellent. I'm promoting you to Blade's Apprentice. Like some time to think about how this fits in with the Emperor's plans for you. If you'd like to get in a little freelance adventuring, go ahead. But whenever you're ready, I'll have new orders for you. Okay. Well, that's going to be Caius telling me that I should fuck off and do my own thing for a while. Well, he looks into that. In the meantime... I'm going to store away all of my books and the like because those are just taking up inventory space and wait and wait my potion ingredients in there because I'm probably not going to be making potions on the go anyways. I was keeping some of them in here to begin with so I can just make them while I'm here and get new ones on the go. Guild. In Punabi, over in the direction of Morandas, and one of them something to do with Caldera. Hmm. Let's check 
here. Punabi. There's nothing to do with Miranda, so Monway's dues. for that and we've got plenty of supplies for the moment don't really need a whole lot when we can just throw lightning at fools and that's our main method of dealing with stuff in battle Unfortunately, we haven't managed to find a recall spell yet. But I will do eventually. And actually, in anticipation of that being a thing, I am going to cast Mark in Caius's house. will want to be able to throw down a mark and have this be the place we can return to when necessary. There's a mark. So we've marked Caius's house. Once I finally managed to get myself a recall spell, we will have the ability to teleport to and fro. And that is really going to cut down my travel time. The ability to snap my fingers and be back here. Once we are done with something. Rather than having to muck around with... Putting one foot in front of the other and walking. Or getting on a silt strider or boat. Or boat, then silt strider. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, we gotta go that way. We're gonna go off and do some stuff for the Mage's Guild now. Before we head back to Caius. Start advancing uh, that little bit of business. Looks like we wanna just keep going this general direction. Eventually hit Miranda's. And Punabi should be just past that. Which is the place we have to go for collecting that person's debt.
No, we don't want to be going to that particular ruin, in fact. The wildlife, great. <sighs> Fucking Morrowind. Doesn't matter where I go. Always something trying to kill me. At this point I should just I can get used to it. Oh, what in the shit was that? Uh, the locals are also paralyzing me now. Spectacular. I know I'm checking my map a lot. Deal with it. And it's that, or I get hopelessly lost. And end up fighting demon babies or something. Take your pick. read that map right, Miranda should be in this general direction. And once we find it... Oh dear god, it's one of those flying monstrosities again. But yeah, once we find Miranda's... Shouldn't be that far to our actual destination. If I'm remembering right. Was the last of my magic. <sighs> Fuck off and die, you, f you flying winged monstrosities. Nobody likes you.
though I have to admit, I was rather pleasantly surprised to see that Caius apparently didn't give a shit about the fact that I got the information he wanted by going to a different person and all. I mean, I don't know much about the Blades other than the fact that they spy for the Empire. Maybe they legitimately don't care so long as I get the job done. Some more freedom to make my own rules where necessary wouldn't be a bad thing necessarily. Not saying it's good, but having some more flexibility when I'm out in the field, not having to follow everything to the letter, could be nice. And it definitely sounds like it'd be useful. Dwarven ruin up there. Let's just check my notes again. Miranda is it just south of the lake? And let's need to find some lake from here, and then and Punabi is on the trail that leads northeast. From so I don't have to actually go inside the ruin. Which is good. I think I spotted a guar in there and... After my... Fight with that weird guar motherfucker... Over in Pelagiad, I am none too eager to tangle with one again. Got to be kidding me. Imps. I did not come here to fight Daedra. Tell me. I've got some potions I can use here. Restore health. Let's see. And some flynn. Yeah, no. I am not doing that again. I am not doing that again. Not today, anyhow. <laughs> 